All right, van life. Is it based or cringe? Mobile life, living in a car, is that stupid? Let's talk about that. Um, so, I don't have an email that I printed out that I'm responding to in this video, but this is a question I get pretty often. So I figure I might as well knock them all out of the park in this one. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, if I want to live self-sufficiently, or at least, you know, no one's perfectly self-sufficient, but if I want to move more in that direction, is it a good idea to live in my car, in a camper, in, you know, some kind of mobile thing? All right, I get that kind of question a lot. And I will tell you when I was a kid, okay, when I was like a teenager or whatever, uh, I was always thinking, my mindset has always been, how can I live using the least amount of money, okay? That, I mean, that's always been, like a lot of people are like, let me make a lot of money. I've always been like, how can I live in as little as possible? That's been my mindset, right? Um, so I often thought about, hey, could I live in my car? Could I like not buy land? Could I not buy a house? Could I get by with that, just living in a car uh, or station wagon or something like that, something with a little bit, little bit more room, okay? Um, now, and a lot of millennials, millennials love this. They're like, oh, dude, oh, van, mobile life, this is so tiny houses, dude. Oh, this is so awesome. Um, but the thing is, I, I think it's mostly uh, kind of a, um, if you live like that at all, it's going to be a very brief phase. I'll just tell you that. Um, and it'll end up being a, a phase much more expensive than you think. Um, now, if you want to live a more or less self-sufficient lifestyle, it's impossible to do it on the road. It's impossible to do it in any kind of van or anything like that. Um, like, you can't have a normal life. You can't have, you know, a, a set place that you live. Uh, if you're doing that already, you might as well just, you know, build a house that's cheap or something like that. Um, the way I think of it is, like, when you are living mobily, when you're living in a car or a van or something like that, a single car accident could you lose you everything you have, right? Even even a minor fender bender that consigns you to the side of the road for a couple days, that could be a setback enough. But especially if your car is stolen or your car is damaged, you know, or, or like vandalized or something like that, or, you know, a, a someone T-bones you or something like that, everything you have is just immediately gone, okay? Uh, that's one of the big problems. Um, that I, I think a lot of people don't think about because maybe they've never been in a wreck or they don't look at that as a possibility. That, that's problem number one. Like you, even if you're minimizing your expenditures, you are in a position where it's much easier to lose much, much more, okay? Um, thing number two is one of the things you have to have when you're living a normal life <laughs> is you, you need a lot of space, okay? Not just general space to like walk around or do stuff, um, but you, like, you need places to store tools, um, to store things that you're not using every day or every week or maybe every month or maybe even every year. You want space, okay? And you might not need a lot of space. You might be able to live a very full life on a quarter of an acre or maybe even less, maybe an eighth of an acre, something like that. Um, but you are going to need some space to store stuff. You're going to want to have a shed. You're going to want to have, uh, something to, you know, put the things you're not using in and if you have some kind of mobile living everything you have like everything you own and I I've known people who live mobily but the thing is everything they have has to be some kind of mobile equivalent and they can never have the best stuff if you want to do something basic with basic tools it's just not going to happen uh, that's not the kind of thing if you're just contemplating this lifestyle you're not really thinking about it that often but that is going to be a big problem like you there there's a huge swath of things you're not going to be able to do because you can't have a place to, you, you don't have a tool shed um or there's so many things uh that need so you know if you want a saw or something that needs a lot of power that's sort of hard to you know I, I mean everything becomes more difficult right if you're legitimately trying to live you know rem you know remotely especially if you're living out of a car now campers will often have a little bit more room but still nowhere near enough uh you know what you need and that also means you won't be able to do stuff like, uh, you know, growing stuff or holding animals. Uh, I don't hold animals, uh, although I probably should, you know, I have enough land for it. But, um, you know, there are just all these kind of things that you can't do that you should be able to do. Okay. And last and not least, like this might sound like a superficial thing. Um, and I'm all for people being I don't know, eccentric or something like that. But realistically speaking, uh, van life is weird. 
Um, like pe people make it look good on YouTube when they're like, oh, man, here's me and my wife and we have van life and we're going, oh, we're traveling the country. Wow, that sounds like very exotic. But in real life, like, okay, for e even if you have, this actually applies to like tiny houses too, which, uh, you know, I fully recommend. Uh, tiny houses are kind of a meme as well. You should, if, if you want a small house, get a small house. Don't get like one of these tiny houses where everything is like, oh, let me do it in 40 by 40 and like, you know, it's, it's not actually bolted to the ground. Don't do that stuff. And the reason I say this and, you know, of campers is, like, it's hard to have normal friends. <laughs> it's hard to have, like, um, what are you going to do, have someone over in your camper? Uh, it's just not, it, it's going to be awkward. And even in a tiny house, even in a tiny home where you're, like, showing people, oh, wow, this is how we store this. Wow, it's so creative and blah, blah, blah. Um, the thing is, when you have someone over, the whole spiel will be you showing them your house that is actually very uncomfortable to, like, live and visit in uh, and stuff like that. Now, the only exception would be if you have your house on some, you know, large plot of land where you can do stuff outside. But at that point, you might as well just have, you know, a slightly bigger house or, you know, in the case of a camper, like, I mean, if, if you're moving around from place to place, it's sort of weird to just have people at the camping lot you're staying at. So I think, um, you know, although, like, I understand the principles of people who want to live this kind of lifestyle, and I did when I was a kid, when you really think it through, and you really, like, experiment with it, and there was a period, you know, I was never, like, homeless, but, you know, there were times where I was visiting a town, and I'd be like, I'll just stay in my car, and I'll see how that goes. And it's always, like, it's always more expensive than you think. Um, especially if you want to park legally, you have to, you know, either you have to pay or you have to go to, you know, some certain place and like, you're just, it, it's just kind of a pain. Like there are going to be a lot of costs you don't realize. And of course you're paying for gas, massive amounts of gas. Cause you're dragging around everything you own in your camper or whatever. Uh, you can say, oh, I'll just, you know, unhook it or I'll have another car or something. And it, there are just so many things to think through. Um, so I think a lot of people, they, they see people on YouTube, um, living camping, kind of a camping life or like even tiny homes, as I mentioned, like, I think they're kind of, um, uh, I think people, I mean, tiny homes are less bad because you can have like space and stuff and you can do a lot of kind of normal stuff. It's just hard to have people over, you know, have people visiting, stay with you, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, those are my thoughts. That's why I think, um, you know, th th your priority should really be having land, a good amount of land, uh, maybe a couple acres, but like you could definitely survive on less than one acre so long as it's, you know, you, you've got some uh, breathing room. Uh, and if you're short on cash, if you're like a young kid, um, I mean, even college age, and I'm talking really short on cash, like you don't have anything contemplate going in with it go, going in with your friends to, to buying land or something like that that you can all use or buying an old house uh, living in there just to save money and stuff like that uh, that would be my actual recommendation uh, and I will tell you you know once you're an adult and you're more financially independent and stuff like that you will start thinking about well I could probably I could probably own multiple properties and you know if, if you're willing to wait and willing to look for good deals um, you know, th then things become a lot easier. And so your priority now, if you're young, should be, let me put myself in a position where I'm not, uh, I don't have to spend that much and I have a pretty stable place where, you know, I have a little bit of breathing room if I'm going to work on something, but you know, that's about it. Um, but I will say just as, as one extra addendum, I have known a couple guys. I've, I've never done this. I have known, known a couple guys who have been voluntarily homeless, uh, in the sense that like they're working in a job in another city and, you know, they don't have a wife or anything. So they're like, okay, I, you know, I'm working 10 hours a day. I am just going to live in my car, <laughs> you know, and, and do something like that. And if you're, if you're, if you feel open to that, as long as you're not, you know, shackled like a wagey to that job forever, you're just doing it because I can make a lot of money here. And then a couple months I'll do something else. That is an option, but that is not something obviously you want to live in uh, or make a habit. Um, but anyway, so that's my feelings about remote, you know, mobile living. Uh, it, it is sort of a meme, but, uh, and, and don't have that as a goal. Okay, that's all I'm saying. All right, that's it.